What's going on YouTube? It's been a while since I created any videos. So today we're gonna talk about wrappers for web drivers. Uh, so assuming you guys want to write a framework based on web driver to do some web automation, uh, I definitely, definitely recommend that you have wrappers and that, that you think about your low level functions and how you're gonna wrap them because web driver does have bugs. Uh, it's not perfect, and any like any time you're creating some some framework, you want to be sure that you're referencing your own code more often than you reference some third-party libraries. So to do that, you need your wrappers uh, that will give you a bunch of different control over your program and how you want to optimize it later on if you do choose to do so. Um, it gives you just a lot a lot of control. Um, and yeah it, it just you, you have to do it if you if you don't have wrappers in your framework then your framework is not gonna live for very, for very long or it's gonna be very hard to maintain um, so <clears throat> we're gonna talk about two types of uh, wrappers and this is gonna be kind of a two-part series uh, on the wrapper um, aspect of it but there's gonna be more videos that are gonna be referencing the same concepts later on when we're gonna be doing the page object um, but so this first part is we're gonna talk about the wrapper for driver object itself so we have um, sort of like whenever we create a driver right we need to make sure uh, we use that driver to open the URL, open the tab, or find some elements um, on the page. So this particular wrapper is going to be controlling the aspect uh, of like managing the state of the driver itself, right? So like, if we need to open the page, we're going to use this wrapper. If we need to open a new tab, we're going to use this wrapper. If we need to navigate back on the page, we're going to use this wrapper. Forward, if you want to close a window, close a tab, open a new tab, uh, anything like that, we're going to use this wrapper. If you want to set some custom settings uh, when we created the driver, we're also going to do it through this uh, wrapper. Now, <clears throat> this wrapper is going to be referenced in the other wrapper for the UI objects, and that's in part two. We're going to talk about how uh, how to create a wrapper for like interacting with elements on the page okay that's all gonna be in part two if you guys have watched my videos on Appium this is very similar to to that uh, concept and I think it's covered in great detail if you're interested in mobile automation do check out the videos on uh, how to create Appium framework um, we're going to be using a lot of the same concepts a lot of the concepts over here are going to be improved as well um, <clears throat> so let's take a look at this browser manager uh, class that I have or the browser class um, so again uh, like I said the wrappers are needed to kind of keep the code uh, keep to, ha to have one entry into the code which allows you to uh, tweak it, optimize it, have more control over what's happening, when it's happening, and it allows you to kind of uh, manage your uh, framework much easier because everything is referencing this. Everything gets access to particular functionality of your framework through one code path, right? So you know exactly that if certain things in your framework do certain certain things, it gets done through this like they, they, they get the handle to, to this interface through this code so when you thinking about optimizing it it's gonna be much easier for you to come in here and be like okay I wanna I can optimize it this way and this way and this way and it's gonna take effect throughout your framework because everyone is accessing that functionality through you know a, a set of common functions <clears throat> that you have defined in this particular wrapper so um, yeah, so here we have a couple of variables. This is not a big deal, just uh, telling which uh, kind of browsers that I guess we want to support. Um, not necessarily because, I mean, even though we do have this, like for example, in our framework uh, that I'm working on right now, even though, though we have this, we don't really support it. Uh, a lot of people just support Chrome. Um, so, but over here we have a function to create a driver, right? Um, pretty common uh, function, probably self explanatory, just creates a driver. Uh, it does have an internal function inside of itself 
uh, that actually gets the driver. So what does that mean, get the driver, right? So we look at the driver ID that was passed into the create new driver function and we see which kind of driver we need to get, right? So if it's a Chrome driver, then we referencing the web driver uh, library here to get our Chrome uh, driver object and then we return that at the end over here. Now this internal function gets referenced in this browser uh, map call which is also an internal function to the browser class itself. Now here though we have a thread object, right? This is kind of like, while this is pretty standard, you may have done that yourself, you may have seen it in other frameworks. This is probably not very standard, right? Uh, mapping a thread object to a driver, like what's going on here? <clears throat> so let's take a look at what's going on. So the first thing we did over here is we actually got the thread that was calling this function. If we're not running in multi-threaded mode, this is going to be the main thread, right? It's always going to be the main thread that's calling this function. So the main thread will get mapped to the driver object that we returned over here. In our case, it was the web driver Chrome, for example. And then all we do is we, we're returning a call, we, we call another function which is the get driver, which actually goes to the map over here. We have internal map defined, which is a dict or hash map. Uh, and we're referencing against the current thread that, that was calling this function. And then we actually get the driver object and we return that object to that, uh, to whoever called this, right? So um, this is this allowed us to, to do a lot of cool stuff that we're going to talk about later. So let's take a look at some other functions that we have in this class. We have a shutdown function, which is just uh, very light over here. It doesn't do much. It just gets the driver object and does a quit on it. So if there are any windows, it's going to close the windows and it's going to close the browser itself. And it's essentially you call this when you're done with your testing. So then we have the internal map function, which all it does is just literally just maps the thread to the driver object or to the dict. Uh, and inside that dict, we have the driver object that we can reference over here. We can also call uh, this get driver map uh, from any place in our framework uh, to just get the value of the driver map itself. Uh, so we can, you know, if we need to take a look which threads uh, are in the map, uh, which threads have which driver, maybe we need to access a driver from a different thread. Uh, this would kind of give us that functionality over here. Um, probably not going to be used much, uh, but it is here if the need arises. Um, the reason this driver map is actually internal uh, variable and basically the way you know this is an internal variable, it, it has a double underscore, it's because it is a protected, like I want to protect this variable because it's very important. Every, all this mapping stored and this is going to be used across the entire framework uh, later on. So I want to make sure that no one can um, change this variable. No one can mess it up. So this is internal and it can only be accessed by the browser itself. Um, so then we have some other functions in this class, like going back, going forward, it's just navigating, you know, across the pages uh, that we have been to. Then we can open a new tab, switch to window, um, switch to the latest active window, meaning if we have multiple tabs open, this call will actually switch to the latest one that was opened. Um, and this one will just close the current window that we're on. So if we, we have multiple tabs open, like right here, I have some tabs open. Uh, let's assume this is a browser. If I am on this tab, it's gonna close this tab and it's gonna switch to the latest one. And once this tab is closed, the latest one is gonna be this UI object tab. So this is what, what would happen in the browser. Now, <clears throat> if you want to add functionality uh, that controls your browser, Right, this is where you would add it. Uh, this browser class would be responsible for that. That's your wrapper to kind of manage the state of your driver. So if something is missing and there is a lot that is actually missing in here, because I th th this was taken from a live framework that I have when I removed a uh, ton of stuff from here just to make it friendly for the YouTube viewer. Um, so you could add a lot of stuff in here on top of it, but it, it's, it's scalable. Whatever you want to do, you can do here to control your um, uh, browser. Now let's take a look at um, some code over here. Um, I actually want to show you why it's important to uh, do this approach with thread mapping. Uh, what that gives you, what advantage that gives you. Uh, so maybe you have seen 
uh, some frameworks before where um, where you kind of have to pass in the driver object from page object to page object maybe even from different test suites to test suites uh, or maybe your driver gets created at the test suite level it gets passed in to uh, some classes that are responsible for uh, generating page objects or whatnot and then it goes from there so by doing this mapping we essentially illuminate it and let me just kind of uh, run this simple code to show you what I mean um, so we have four different URLs here that I want to visit and I want to print out the thread that visited this URL and what URL it was right so essentially uh, we're looping through URLs here and we have uh, our threading library which is going to allow us to create a thread with the function that we want to run which is this get URL function and we're going to pass in a URL uh, parameter inside this function which is, the, which is going to be the URL that we want to visit right so the very first thread that will get created will get indexed with zero and this URL to visit right so notice that I'm not actually saying that hey thread zero go to this URL or thread one go to this URL right it's uh, it's gonna be done automatically over here so if I run this code and by the way when I run this code you guys are not gonna see the browser windows popping up over here but you'll see them popping up kind of over here because uh, I have a dual screen and for some reason it just pops up on a different screen so let's run this code <coughs> So there we go, we have four browser windows that popped up. They all go into their respective URLs and they output um, the URL links over here in the console, right? So we see that URL one that got created and this actually completed after, um, so the way it got created is in a, in, a, in a different order, right? First, this thread got created, but this page didn't load fast enough because thread one which was the second one to get created actually loaded page faster so it reported fat at first right it said okay hey um thread one or thread two in this case i visited this page the page url is this and then the other one loaded the page and it's this so but <clears throat> the point is um I never said which your, which thread should go to which page, right? It just kind of happened uh, in order that they received it. Um, so think about it. Think what if if instead of uh, URLs here, we actually had uh, test suites, right? Classes for test suites, because uh, like in JUnit, for example, when you create uh, when you create tests, right, you write a class, you create a Java class, and then you write your um, tests within that class, right? So that's your test suite. Same thing in, in uh, Python, you have frameworks like unit test that allows you to do that. Uh, and in, in the same manner, you have your Python classes that represent uh, test suites. So you can actually run your entire um, suite class this same way. And if you have a framework which is written correctly, and what happens in your test suites? Well, your test suites are going to be referencing your page objects, right? And your page objects are going to be referencing uh, your wrapper for the UI objects to do things on the UI, right? And then somewhere in there, maybe you'll reference your wrapper for the browser to kind of, you know, uh, uh, maybe change your page or do something special, but probably not going to happen very often. But your UI object wrapper uh, will reference this all the time because to do something on the page right to enter text or click a button or whatever you want to do on the page you need to get the driver right you, you need the web driver object to do that so all that wrapper is going to be getting the driver object through this call now this call internally knows which thread is calling it right and when we created the driver let's say we were testing a login page over here let's just say login and then let's change this to maybe like dashboards or something maybe we have an, a web application that has some dashboards and we want to test that page so this two test suites right this is test suites uh, they're gonna run in in parallel Right, so the driver that's going to get created for the login page here, uh, the the wrapper for UI objects, 
and the page objects, they're going to get the thread that was created for the login page. So they always going to work in the context of the of that a driver while the dashboards they're gonna get another browser right how you how you saw the browser spawn over here uh, there's gonna be another browser that's gonna be spawned just for dashboards and every time we referencing to do something on a page uh, that's gonna be done in the context of the of this dashboards browser so we are illuminating completely illuminating the management and the overhead that you had before to like pass passing that driver object from page object to page object which is when I'm looking at some of those frameworks that people create and they do that it just I don't know it makes me gringe a little bit so there we go in the next video guys we're gonna talk about the UI objects uh, and we're gonna be referencing this call quite often uh, so if this video didn't make sense go ahead and watch the other one it probably gonna clear up some uh, some of your uh, maybe concerns or whatever else you have uh, about this um, yeah if this video helped you out make sure to like subscribe and share and take care guys